Welcome back, everybody, for Trading Thursday, where this episode is going to be a pretty entertaining, uh, pretty much just diving through the S&P market, because if you look at the market or even look at the history, that ever since September, what, 2nd, um, everything's been like downhill as far as the S&P 500 which comprises of the top 500 companies in the market. Um, We're looking at companies such as Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Berkshire Hathaway, B, um, Google, and Johnson Johnson, JP Morgan, Chase, all the fun stuff. And if you notice on, if you just look up S&P 500 and Google search, you can actually look at the history of the stock market. And I'm actually looking at about like a month ago. The reason why I usually do about a month when I'm picking trades is because they kind of give you like a quick history of how it's been doing for the past month. And then I usually try to go out like a year to date or YTD and then go like a complete year. Um, I usually do this only just to kind of get gauge on like, well, how far did it go since COVID uh, was announced here in the U.S.? And I try to go over the whole index, the whole S&P 500 index, to kind of get a quick overview of what the the market is really doing. And since COVID uh, was happening, let's see, the bottom of the market here was March 23rd. The S&P got down to $2,237.40. And currently, as of today, which is the 23rd when I'm recording this, it is at $3,236. Granted, yeah, that's a jump, but it's still trending down. So that means that the market has more of a way to go down now than it did before. However, I think a lot of people are getting scared because we have the election coming up here in the U.S. We also have a second round of COVID that's across other countries. Then we also have the president that said that we're not shutting down anymore uh, and calling out the U.K. for shutting down their doors during the their second round of COVID. So what does that really mean? I think it's a lot of people are being smart about the indicators that happened before and are taking their chances by selling off now before everything really starts to hit the fan again. So if you haven't been investing slowly and throughout the month uh, since this this has been going on, you have a perfect opportunity to come back in. Um, And you really shouldn't have any issues coming back in because um, things are going back on sale. Um, We also have schools coming up. And so that gets you to think, well, what companies are actually doing well if the top 500 as a whole, that whole portfolio is actually going down? Well, one company that I came across that kind of came up on my radar, which is Carvana, is a, its ticket symbol is CVNA. And they actually shot up on the 22nd of September. They went from $170 to $220. I think that's a great jump and it's been pretty steady even though it's slowly coming down a little bit but it is staying around the 220 218 mark right now and they don't have dividends but you know it, it's really good to say because also this month of September is when a lot of people start to talk about their quarterly earnings and also talk about their finances And those quarterly earnings are done each year. And for each company to talk about their 
earnings? Like, what do they plan on doing for the future? What have they done? And what funding or profits or loss that they've incurred throughout the quarter? Now, the quarters are split up from December, March, June, and September. So September is actually wrapping up, which means that it's really a good time to either figure out what are you going to do with your funding to continue to invest in what you have or, you know, just do nothing, which is okay. But I still suggest to, as for some people do, is kind of find a rhythm that you're comfortable with. I'm still just playing around with a lot of stuff, but a lot of people that I've talked to actually have a monthly rhythm where they take maybe just $1,000 or $100 and invest on the 15th or the first of the month just to kind of make sure they constantly in there. Because ultimately, you might get some wins on the, on the dips, which is what you want. You want to buy low, sell high. However, we get those emotions. So if you watch it day to day, it's like, man, the stock market went down today. But did it really go down or did it just go down just a little bit and it's going to go shoot back up? And then as it's going down, some people decide to sell, which is already too late. And you miss out on all the gains on the way back up. So just finding your rhythm and just stick with it is the best thing that I can suggest. Again, this is your money. You can do what you want to. But I'm just sharing with you that these emotions dealing with this stuff is is crazy. Um, But anyway, I digress. So if you really want to start looking into what companies you want to look into, I would say check out all the stuff that you're already purchasing now. And actually look at the company through Yahoo Finance is okay. You can check them out and put in your company and actually see when the quarterly earnings are going to happen, when are the splits, if they're going to have any, and really dive into those companies that you really want to get into. But um, I have to say that uh, Tesla is really hurting me right now. I mean, it's down to 380 at this point. And when it originally first split, it was like at 440 or 450, something ridiculous. And then it shot up to like 498. And now it's sitting at 380. Like, that's a whole $100 that's lost uh, within was less than a month, which is crazy. So it's like, though they had 380 prior to the split, and they were just kind of leveling out around equivalent now, it'll just be the $300 mark. Cause I believe before the split, it was at like 2000 and some change. Uh, it was a five to one split, um, uh, back in early September. And also battery day just happened for Tesla to start making their own batteries. However, because it, this is their quarterly earnings, a lot of people were looking for the quick wins. So what are they going to do now or in the near future? Tesla released on battery day, something that's very long term. So most people are like, well, it's nothing new. So why are we heavily investing in this company if it's, you know, it's something down the road? We'll worry about the stuff later down the road. Many speculations, but that's what I'm thinking as an investor for Tesla. It's like, you know, what, what are we what are we talking about here? So maybe I'll try to buy some more a little later. I'm honestly going to wait out. I think it's going to drop down to like 300 by, let's say, October 15th. I'm just taking a wild guess here. But anyway, hope you guys are doing well out there. Remember to take time out and really invest. And if this is an investment invest in the companies that you're investing in, like really get to know them because once you put your money in, 
just think of it long term. Um, everybody looking for these quick wins. It's not going to happen. I mean, it might happen once, but how many other ones are you actually losing on? And you want to talk about the quick ones. Um, but I really want to start talking into the futures. And when they talk about futures, they're actually talking about the... I forgot what they call them. Because I do it all the time. Oh, options. So they're talking about the options trading. And if there aren't many people investing as far as the options or the futures of the company, then that is something to worry about. And the best thing you can do, I would say, to figure out what are those futures are for a particular company. I, I love bar chart. Or you can just Google um, what is this futures. You can just Google stock futures. And it'll just show you like what's what are the pre-market trends and so forth. And this is directly coming from money.cnn.com. I'll put a link in the show notes about it. But honestly, it's it's up in the air. The market is so volatile right now and, and everybody is unsure what's gonna happen. So if you already have a lot of you have at least two thousand dollars or invested two thousand dollars into whatever brokerage company you're using, you can start doing puts on some of these options, uh, on some of these companies. And I, I really think that you'll you'll win pretty well because with the second round of COVID coming, it's really up in the air. I think a lot of people that you'll listen to will tell you that this is uh, something to really look out for because I, I can't foresee um, anything going up. Like what will really make all the everybody happy again to start investing more because um, there is no definite like definite answer for COVID vaccine. We still have the flu season coming up. So is it best to go into pharmaceuticals? We don't know. Um, but so far, the only other people that I've seen that have been good to look into is uh, AstraZeneca. You have, um, what does it call it? Hard bio. And you have the other company, Hard bio. And I don't know, it'll, it'll come to me. But that other, like these companies are the, the big ones. Also, you have Pfizer. And I think their sticker is PFE. Yes. And their stock is even tanking, even though there was a message saying that there might be a vaccine just yesterday, um, as far as for people to have something available. But also, the people that are going to have the vaccine, we won't really see anything until later next year, which doesn't make sense on what can we do right now as investors to try to make money through this thing, um, especially on the long term. I mean, it will be great to just continue to, to purchase like you're doing a monthly, but if you're watching this on a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, I'm looking at six months out here on Pfizer, and, I mean, you probably made about $7 a share, just keeping it in there. If you just purchase exactly March 24th, and that's about it. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal, but also, if you look at Pfizer, you're getting 4.22% dividends. So you are getting paid at least through these, um, through these times. So I really think um, if you're looking to make money doing this process, even though the stocks are going down, yeah, I think I think this will be good. Look into 
getting dividend shares at this point. Just start making some income. Um, if you're at an older age, I would suggest look into not reinvesting your dividend and just but just go on and take it out if you're already retired because it could help out with your income. But if you're still working, just let the dividends reinvest themselves, which is called a drip. And just stack up because, I mean, it's it's a win-win. You keep your rotations, you get your dividends in and buy more shares. Uh, for the most part, a lot of these pharmaceutical companies haven't been uh, informed that they're going out of business. However, speaking of going out of business, we heard about Nikola. Ooh, Nikola stock had dropped down to like $21. I remember when this company went up to like almost $80, $90. And it was uh, back in June. Now it's back down to $21. I really think if you if you put in the put for this, even down to like $10, you're going to make some money. Um, but this this company is sad, especially when you got some of your executives dropping out and the company just went public not too long ago. The scandal is just getting worse and worse. So maybe I'll dive into that next Thursday. Seems like it'll be fun to see how far if Nicola even survives to the next episode. Anyway, y'all have a good one out there. Stay safe. Keep investing. Keep grinding. You got this. If you have any questions, by all means, shoot me an email at aboutthatwallet at gmail.com. And I look forward to doing my best to answer your questions. Take care. Well, that concludes this episode of About That Wallet. I hope this topic was helpful. If you want to get the latest episodes, please subscribe to this podcast, wherever you're listening to it. Remember, it is your duty to know about that wallet. Take care. Be safe. I'm out. Peace.